What's up, super people? My name is Aaron Oster. I am a number one best-selling author and um kind of tired, but today I thought I'd do a video anyways because I did miss Sunday. Um, so yeah, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about just, uh, fighting, pretty much. Um, uh, giving some basic tips on, uh, specific moves in martial arts and how you can apply them to your book. Uh, so if you can just destroy that like button and subscribe, I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. So with that said, let's get right into the video. So I found that one of the biggest issues that people have with writing a fight scene is that they don't really know how to fight themselves. And if you don't do the research, if you don't actually know how to do it, um, a lot of people uh, can have trouble writing specifically about fighting if they don't know how to fight. It's, it's the same thing, for example, if you're trying to write about anything. You're trying to describe someone, uh, how they're plowing a field. You know nothing about farming. You're going to have a bit of a hard time going into any detail about that. So I'm just going to give you a few little basic uh, martial arts terms, uh, moves. They're going to be just basic, basic moves. But from there, you can build out. And if you want to see more about this, just uh, let me know down in the comments. So the first thing we're going to start with is the stance the way a martial artist would stand. And this goes for most martial arts out there. Now, there are a whole bunch of other stances, but this is something that most people are familiar with. It is called the T stance. It is called the T stance because, uh, just do this picture in your mind, the letter T only upside down, where your lead foot, which is your front foot, is on the center line of the T, and your back foot, is on one side or the other of the T, depending on you, if you're a righty or a lefty. If you're a righty, you'll generally stand with your left foot forward and your right foot back. And if you're a lefty, you'll just do the opposite. Now, this will place you in a position where you've got your lead hand. For me, I'm a righty, so I'm just gonna be going with left. So your lead hand is your left hand, that's the one in front. And that is the one that is made for speed. And the backhand, which would be your right, or my right anyway, which is for power. So, the I'm just going to give you four basic punches. From here, there is the jab, the cross, the hook, <laughs> whoops, and the uppercut. Yeah, almost, uh, almost used a different finger there. I apologize for that. Um, okay, so the jab punch. That is the front hand that is delivered with your lead hand. It's just a straight punch right out. It's a quick snap of the hand, and it is meant for speed. Um, I have never heard of someone being knocked out by a jab punch because, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's got nothing behind it, but then again... I'm sure that somewhere, at some point, someone was knocked out by a jab, but a jab, again, is just for speed. As my sensei would say, the jab is just to give you a second to breathe. Um, so, the jab punch is your front hand. It's a very quick snap, and it's meant to, uh, again, stun, throw off balance, give yourself some time. After that comes the cross punch, which is where the real power comes in the cross punch, takes the power of your entire body and focuses it right into one point. Basically, the way a cross is thrown is that from your position, you would pivot your back leg, that's your right leg, twist your upper body and, well, your whole body pretty much, along with the pivot, and then extend your fist out into a punch. I wish I could do this on full camera. It'd be much easier to demonstrate. But basically, think of just... A pulley, pretty much, where one half of your body is being pulled back and the other half is being pushed forward along with your fist. Uh, that's the way I can tell you to visualize it, basically, and because your cross punch comes with literally just your entire body's weight, it's got a lot of power if you're doing it right, especially the more you weigh, uh, which is why they have weight classes in martial arts, because the more weight you've got behind the punch, the more power it's got. And if you weigh more, your punch is going to carry more weight. So 
yeah, the cross punch, another, just a straight punch um, where you're pivoting your back leg, twisting your hips and your shoulder, and um, yeah, it's a straight punch. All right, next comes the hook punch. Um, now, I'm sure in a lot of movies you're going to see people just throwing their arms out wide and swinging like that. That's a very stupid thing to do. Don't, don't do that because... Uh, first of all, you're leaving your entire face open. And I'm just saying this so you can understand how your characters will fight. Uh, and hey, you know, if you're getting anything from this, great. <laughs> um, if you're throwing a hook punch, you don't want to wind up. You don't want to pull your arm back and cock it for the throw. You don't want to do that. A hook punch, you're from here. You're just pulling your arm up like this. This way, your face is still protected the entire time. If it's a short hook punch, that means you're close then you're literally just punching like this. Your body is doing all the work for the hook punch. Your arm is up, your shoulder is up, so you're protecting yourself, and from here, you'd pivot and throw the punch. If you're going a bit wider, you turn your fist sideways, and still, little tip is that you want to tilt your wrist a little bit to keep your front two knuckles pushed forward so you don't accidentally break your pinky. So, short hook punch from here, you know, sorry. <laughs> Short hook punch from here, wider hook punch from here. But again, you are pivoting your back leg and your entire body. And the force of the hook is coming from your weight, not from the movement of your arm. And for the last punch is the uppercut. And that, it depends on what uppercut you're using. There's the short uppercut, which you're just twisting your body in and then coming right up from here. Or there's the... Uh, well, there's the more powerful uppercut where you're pulling your entire body down and then coming up with the punch. But the whole point of any kind of martial art, especially with uh, fighting, obviously is for self-defense. Uh, there is obviously some martial arts for entertainment, but the way I was taught was for self-defense. And when you're writing a fight scene, you want to write it, you want to be entertaining, but you've got to try and keep it as realistic as possible. You know, my sensei taught us one thing. Most fights are over in 15 seconds. And if you can't finish a fight before then, you're probably better off just running the other way. I mean, in any situation where you've got to defend yourself, you're better off just, you know, running the other way. You know, fighting is always a last resort. But we're getting off topic here. Um, the way that you fight um, should always be in a way where you are always in control. That means never drop your guard when you're when you're throwing that punch, uh, because, mm, well, if you drop your guard, you're opening yourself up to get hit back. Um, now you know. While I'm here, I was talking about my punches. I may as well just throw some kicks in too. Um, I'm just gonna go with three kicks. Um, so, basic ones are your front kick, where you're just lifting your foot up, you're pushing it out, and you're pulling your, uh, sorry, you're pulling your toes back, and you are hitting with the, gosh, I don't know if it's the ball, yeah, the ball of your foot, that's what's impacting, and the reason you're pulling your toes back is because you don't want to break them, um, I've seen people get their toes caught when they were doing a front kick, and... It's not, it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> so, toes curl back, the ball of your foot does the impact. Now, it's the same thing as your jab and cross punch. The front foot snaps up. It's a quick thing to just stagger. The back foot, when it comes up, you are leaning into the kick, even. So, you're coming up, you're bringing the foot out, and you're leaning in. Most places where you're going to center are right here. And you want to just knock the other person back. So think of the front kick as your, you know, the front kicks as your jab and cross. Front foot for speed, back foot for the power. Um, now for the side kick, that is where you would turn and you would hit with the blade of your foot. Again, you'd want to pull your whole foot in pretty much. And you want to hit with the side of your foot. So, or is it the side? Gosh, it's either the flat or the side. I'm pretty sure it's the blade of your foot. I'd have to actually do the move because I know I I know what I'm doing it, but I'm not actually remembering it right now. Whatever the case is, you want to be hitting with the side of your foot, and just like the jab and cross, this is a linear punch. You're just a linear strike. You're going straight. So there are actually 
a few types of sidekicks, but I'm literally just going with the basic sidekick. That is a very short pivot, and then you are turning and throwing your leg out. Now, the way I describe it for a sidekick is that you're balancing on one foot when you're throwing the kick. So obviously you're going to be off balance. Now your best chance to stay balanced and keep the power is that on the foot that you are using uh, to brace yourself, you are going to want to pivot that to the side, right? When you're facing straight on and then you throw a kick that way, you're going to knock yourself over because you've got no balance. But if you turn your foot this way and you throw the kick that way, you've got a whole bunch, you've got your entire foot. You've got a, a lot more balance. It's easier to keep yourself balanced. And it also opens your legs up and makes to stretch, it makes the stretching of that kick easier. I don't know if you guys are understanding or not. I really hope you are, but if you don't, just look up a sidekick on YouTube. And the final kick is the one that a lot of people use, but don't actually know what it is. And that is the roundhouse kick or the round kick, as they call it. And the round kick is basically like your hook punch, but it actually does involve more of the whipping motion than the hook punch does. So it's basically a, you know, you see people doing this, but you're doing it with your whole body. Basically, the way a round kick works is that you are going to bring your foot up and across. So you're basically whipping it like a hook. So you're bringing it from down here, you know, your, your back or front foot, and you're bringing it around in a whipping motion and striking your opponent. Uh, there's a high round, a low round. There, there are a lot of different types of roundhouse kicks too. We'll keep it short and simple. For the front roundhouse kick, um, if you're going for speed, you are going to do a very short pivot, right? You are literally just turning your front foot from here. You're turning it 45 degrees inward. Oh, is it inward or outward? Gosh, I'm trying to remember. So you're here. You pivot your foot. No, you're pivoting your foot this way. No, oh, this is the front kick. What am I talking about? <laughs> your back leg stays where it is. Your front leg literally just comes up, smack normally right to the ribs. Um, a full front roundhouse, you would literally be twisting your entire body the other way. So basically, your back foot is crooked at a 45 degree angle on your T, so you can have balance when you're in your T stance, right? What front foot forward, back foot at 45 degrees, knees bent, back straight, posture, and all that other stuff. Basically, what you're going to do with your 45 degree foot, and I'm going to try and do this over here, is that you're going to turn that 45 degree angle foot all the way the other way. You're going to be turning it backwards, basically. And with your body facing the other way, the front leg is going to come up and you're going to uh, hit the other person. Um, in a lot of fights, you're going to see people going for the head. And that's not really a very smart move as far as martial arts are concerned. I mean, it looks cool. But as far as practicality goes, you'd be a lot better off going for the legs. As another thing my sensei said, you don't chop a tree down by going to the top. You knock it down at the bottom. Um, but again... If you want to mix things up, make things found, sound more exciting in your fight scenes, go for the headshot. The back roundhouse kick comes with the most power because you're literally turning your front foot 180 degrees the other way. You're bringing your entire body around with the back leg. And the way the kick works is it isn't just a plain whipping motion. Your leg comes up and your knee has to come up to a certain height. Otherwise, your foot won't reach what you're aiming for. Again, this would be so much easier if I could just demonstrate, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, it is very easy to just Google it. Look up Roundhouse Kick on YouTube. And what you're basically going to do is you're going to bring your knee up, and then your leg is going to snap right out. And those are the kicks that can... I mean, you can kill someone with uh, a Roundhouse Kick to the head. Uh, do some serious damage. But again... You're probably better off when you're coming up with your knee, swing right down for for uh, for the other person's knee. Uh, if you're looking to do some real damage in uh, your books, it's a good way to incapacitate someone if you don't want to kill them. Uh, you buckle the knee, you break the joint, you uh, a lot of uh, a lot of good ways you can damage your opponents. But um, yeah, with all of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed me just rambling. I hope you got something out of this. 
Um, if you want to hear more about martial arts, I mean, destroy that like button, even if you don't. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you do. Uh, if you got any other questions or <laughs> anything like that, just let me know. Oh, if you want, uh, you know, 30 days of Kindle Unlimited for free, just get it with the link down below. Audible is the same thing. You know, you get a free audiobook when you sign up using that link. And, uh, yeah. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep being super, and I will see you all next time.